So greenhouse tip number two, um, use a 70% transmissivity glazing. Now there's lots of glazing materials out there. And generally speaking, what we recommend is using a polycarbonate, which is a plastic or Lexan based uh, glazing material. Now, whatever you end up using, you wanna make sure that at least 70% or more of the light is actually getting through. Now, one of the challenges that you have with greenhouse design is that um, the glazing itself has this funny relationship. We've got this funny relationship between um, glazing material, R value, and transmissivity. So generally speaking, as you increase the transmissivity of um, greenhouse glazing material, what you're gonna end up doing is reducing the R value. And so it's a very interesting relationship in that regard. So higher transmissivity, more light coming through, means that you're also losing more thermal energy. Lower transmissivity, generally speaking, um, so less light coming through means that you're losing less thermal energy. And so it's this interesting um, trade-off, if you will, between heating your greenhouse and lighting your greenhouse. So if you've ever gone to commercial greenhouses or spaces like Southern Alberta where we've got massive, massive commercial greenhouses, what you'll notice is that they don't use passive solar greenhouses. And here's the reason why. Light, which is much harder to generate than heat, um, at least more expensive from an um, electricity perspective, is the weak link of most year-round greenhouses. And so they will opt to waste enormous amounts of heat by creating these greenhouses that have glass all around them um, in exchange for just dumping tons and tons of heat into the actual greenhouse itself. So um, what we're saying with a passive solar greenhouse is that we actually uh, want to optimize between both light and heat. And when you live in a climate that gets really cold like ours, um, we get down to as low, not always, not every year, but as low as minus 40, uh, you know, we definitely want to make sure that we're holding some of that heat in. Now, one of the characteristics of our climate here in Alberta is that we actually have very sunny winters. And so when you've got sunny winters and, that are cold, then a passive solar greenhouse is a good bioregional adaptation for uh, the greenhouse itself. So when you're looking to buy your glazing, make sure that you look at the transmissivity uh, on the actual manufacturer's um, specifications. Now there are other glazing materials, and if you haven't seen it yet, we actually have uh, five different passive solar greenhouse case studies on our website, which you can get access to. Um, and I'll make sure that I put that link in the show notes at the end of um, my talk here once we're into the Q&A session. And so if you wanna see how other people are designing their passive solar greenhouses, you might find that really useful. Hey, you're probably already subscribed, but if you're not, click on the subscribe button below and I will make sure to keep you up to date with the most recent permaculture information and education.